Today's pet advice segment is sponsored by University Veterinary Care Center. This morning we welcome Dr. Amy Guernsey with University Veterinary Care Center via Skype. Dr. Guernsey, good morning. Good morning. Well, it seems like there's been more of an interest in telehealth during the pandemic. So let's start with the basics. What is it? Um, so same basics as what you would think of on the human side, um, being able to communicate with a, with a doctor um, regarding a patient, whether that be human or animal, uh, their health, um, medical advice, and determining whether or not they go, need to go ahead and go into an office. Well, does this exist for animals and in what capacity? Um, so it, it does, but with some caveats. Um, telehealth for veterinary medicine varies from state to state. Each state has their own um, legislation that um, dictates what a veterinarian can and can't do. In Kansas, in order to give um, individualized medical advice, uh, medical care, we have to have what's called a VPCR, or veterinary patient-client relationship. And so if you don't have an established vet, um, then then getting good telemedicine is going to be a little bit tricky or very, very generic. They often are just going to be obligated to tell you to go get it, go get a veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk a little bit more about the VPCR and why that is important. Um, so VPCR, or veterinary patient client relationship, is essential to um, good medicine and, and having a, um, a healthy pet in the long run. Um, you know, we think about us being able to tell our doctors, hey, this hurts, I don't feel good because it's been going on for so long. Um, that's a lot more complicated with animals because they can't speak to us. Um, owners do a really good job of saying, you know, she started acting off two or three days ago, um, but the dog or cat or bird or whatever may have been sick well before then. So a physical exam allows us to put hands on that animal, um, to feel around on the belly, listen to heart and lungs, look at hydration. Um, a lot of things that are more difficult for owners to assess on their own. Um, sometimes what we find lines up with what the owner was suspecting. Um, oftentimes, though, we find incidental um, problems or, or things that are completely unrelated to what the owner thought was going on in the first place. Um, so being able to do that physical gives us a full picture as to what's going on with that animal. So once the, the VPCR has been established, when is telehealth most helpful? Um, so once you have that VPCR, you're more likely to be able to do some version of telemedicine with your established veterinarian. Um, if it's a brand new problem that you know your dog was a health, you know, a healthy, happy puppy one day, and then the next day is vomiting and has diarrhea. That's not a good case for telehealth. Um, telehealth is typically most helpful for animals that have chronic or ongoing problems, or the vet has already seen the animal for that issue, and you kind of go back and forth, giving them feedback as to how the animal's doing, and they can give you feedback as to where we go from there. All right, Dr. Guernsey, as always, thank you for your time this morning. And for more information about University Veterinary Care Center, just head over to universityvetcare.com.